Welcome to my second review video. For this video, I will be reviewing this Mocom LA00131 Milk Tea Maker. Uh, for this review, it will be a bit different because the manual that this comes with is in Chinese. So I would also be describing its features and, its, and how to operate it. It will be like, you know, I translated the manual. This is this, when I bought. This is actually comes in two boxes. <laughs> there's this cardboard box to so, you know protect it against uh, damages, but the boxes are like that. But I don't really care. Uh, the box purpose is to buffer the damage to the actual object. So I don't care if this box is, uh, you know, is damaged or something. As long as the item inside is safe. This is a milk tea maker, and uh, among others, it's an also froth milk. This is basically a milk frother that can run for a long time, in particular for 9 minutes and hold at 85 degrees Celsius compared to milk frother, which usually operate at around at most 2 minutes and at 65 degrees Celsius. This is almost the same thing, but with a couple of additions. Okay, first, so here's how it, look, how it looks like. So one thing that you notice is the power socket is detachable. Unfortunately, uh, when I got this, I failed to specify the seller that I wanted a US plug. So I'm stuck with this plug that is not readily available and that's, you know, that, that's not what we use here. Fortunately, this uses your standard three prong, uh, three prong circular plug. So, oh, I actually bought uh, one of the usual, you know, computer the power supply of the computer uh, for laptop, which is also three prong, and with the, your standard, uh, you know, three US three prong. I forgot the actual name for this. It's a standard, which slots into. This perfect for the main unit itself. It comprises of it's like your blender. It has a small cup, which is a measuring cup. The manual says it's a measuring cup. However, I don't know what's the volume of this. I haven't, you know, I haven't done my, I haven't figured out like what, how much volume is supposed to contain. There's nothing says here. Nothing says here or in the manual. Afterwards, we have the main lid, which has the tea strainer. This is actually pretty fine. For better or for worse, this is actually really fine strainer, which you will see later. It's actually useful. Then you have the main mixer body, which has a magnetic detachable stirrer. And this is magnetic. If you notice here, there's nothing. There's no mechanical parts. There's no moving parts inside. Well, as, except for this. This is just a, a peg in the middle, but it doesn't move. It relies on magnet on, on magnets to spin this frother. As you can see. As for the functions, this has one, two, three, four, five. Five functions. From the from the leftmost or from the rightmost, we have the milk tea. We have here we have the milk tea. We have the tea function, the coffee, your milk frother, and your stirrer. I will describe more of the, more on them into details later. But first, the main mode of operation. When I when you plug this in, it will beep. And this button, the one in the middle, it's called a selection or cancel button. This one. This is a selection or cancel button. It will light up, it will blink per second, and it will continue to do so for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, it will just shut off. But it will still work. It, it will still work if you uh, press this. So this is a touch screen. So if I press this, this is the only button. It will uh, activate the... Milk tea, 
and cycle through its functions if I keep on pressing it. And if I stop, after two seconds, it will now do the function it's supposed to do, the highlighted function. To cancel it, I simply long press this, and it will stop. And I can just pull the plug anytime. So that is how you would operate it. You simply plug this in, press this one button, which is a touch a touch button. Which, uh, this function I say selection and as a cancel button. That's it. Oh, and one thing to notice, I don't know if it's visible here. There. You see these two lines? There's one line here and one line there. So this is the minimum liquid that you can put, and this is the maximum liquid. Minimum liquid because if it goes slower than that, it will burn. Uh, because you know, this, the metal part, this actually heats up. If you go lower than that, it will actually burn parts of your liquid because it's, it's uh, minimal contact. And if you go too high, if you go over the, the limit, it will it may overflow because this stir, especially if this stir, it will you know it will raise the li the, the liquid level in terms of height. And if it's too high, it will overflow. And of course, if you use a milk frother, the froth will add you know will will add height to the liquid. So make sure when you put the 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 material, it's between this lower mark and this upper mark between these two, low and high. So let us begin by demonstrating how this works with milk tea. Once I put in the materials, I would fast forward until the end because this will, well, take some time. To make milk tea, simply add milk and then add tea. Milk. Make sure that the liquid is at least low. By the way, this is rated 350 ml. The, the low point I described earlier is 200 ml. The high point is 100 as 350 ml. So from 200 to 350 ml. Depends on how much you want. And I put this tea, tea strainer. Then for the tea, I use this uh, fine, uh, this fine Assam tea. It's, I forgot the actual term. It is, uh, it's, it's not your usual loose leaf. It's a bit finer, so it's like it's powdery. So this is how it looks like. It's actually quite powdery. It's actually quite powdery, which is good because, as you can see, the strainer, the the mesh of this, of this milk tea maker is pretty fine. So uh, it's good because that then we know that the tea won't you know won't go through the strainer, the mesh. So I would just put it here. But ideally, how you would go about is you put the tea in the strainer before you put it in the <laughs> in the milk tea, so that you won't end up like what I like what happened to me, where there I uh, one of the, some of the tea just fell through the the hole and then went into the liquid. But anyway, that's how it's life. I won't uh, put it against the device. It's my stupidity. It's just my stupidity. As mentioned, as mentioned, this is blinking. So I simply press the button once to go to the milk tea function, which is the first one. Milk tea function is the first one here. If I'm looking at it, it's at my left. Press it. Note that it's only one button. If I press the, the button on top, they do nothing. They do nothing at all. They light up, but they do nothing at all. So as you can see, it will stir for three seconds. It will heat up. Then stir again for three seconds. It will heat up. And this will continue for nine minutes. 
now it's done. The milk tea maker is done. If you can see that although I added the milk up to just the lower mark, it actually went high because mixing and heating milk will produce froth. And then at the top, so the uh, tea actually kind of frothed up until the top of the chamber. Now, to consume this, uh, you can either remove this and pour it out, or you can just actually directly drink from the mug. It's at 60. Well, it kind of cooled down a bit, so it's at 60. And then one thing I'm going to do here is that I would turn this upside down and tap. This will allow me to actually capture the tea into the cup. At the same time, well, it doesn't clear up the chamber entirely, but it does a pretty good job. I'm going to pour one out here. Oh, by the way, when this finishes, it will just beep three times. So when you uh, initially heard me operate it, that beep, it will just beep three times. Beep, beep, beep. And I can remove this. And now I would enjoy my no sugar added milk tea. Mm, really, really nice froth here. Look, it's really nice. Mm. Okay, so I washed the device a bit. It didn't take that long. And uh, I'm gonna plug this back in again. And set it to operate. Oh, by the way, for just for the sake of demonstration, I'll put it to the coffee mode. It's in the coffee mode. So if you notice it will it doesn't heat it doesn't stir. So this will just heat up to 95 degrees then afterwards it will stir for five seconds and then that's it. So while I while we wait for this I'll describe a couple of things. Some more some tips while I enjoy this. Mm. Really good milk tea. First, when you put milk in this one, make sure you use room temperature or cold milk. It, it might be tempting to speed up the process by putting in warm milk. However, the problem if you put warm milk is that the milk would end up sticking to the device. Because uh, if you've heated milk before in the stove, you know that if you, uh, if you heat milk in the stove, it will tend to stick at the hot spots. And it's the same here. Although the hot spot of this is more distributed, there will still be hot spots. And if you use warm milk, it will immediately kind of overheat at those hot spots. So it's better if you start off with cold or room temperature milk. You put it here and start it and it will actually be better. So it's easier to clean when you start with cold milk. The other is when you're stirring. So this, this is taking a bit too long. I'll, I'll go for the stirring. I could just switch. The function by the way. So you would want to keep the top lid. Do not remove this big lid. You can remove this one. You can remove this one. No problem at all. But keep this because well physics. If you remove this and it stirs, the water will tend to go up the wall. And if this is not here, it will overflow. However, with this stopper, it won't go out. And as a plus, you need to remove this measuring cup. I don't know why it's called measuring cup. You can actually put stuff inside. So if you want to add sugar while it's stirring or something, if you want to remove this, the, the, the mesh, it'll advise you it's going to be very, very hot. Uh, you can. Sixty-one. I guess that's hot enough. 
the main reason why I bought this in the first place is not to make milk tea. That is a bonus. The thing I want to make this with is hot chocolate. So I'm, I bought this what they call Feel and Filo tableya. I might try to make a review of the different tableyas. Uh, tableya is, for those uninitiated, they're basically they're chocolate, whole chocolate tablets. But they're not meant for direct consumption. They're meant to be mixed with warm milk or warm water to make hot chocolate drink. Really, really thick hot chocolate drink. So in Filipino, we have two we have two terms for hot chocolate. There's chocolate e and chocolate a. Chocolate e is for espresso, so it's gonna be thick, really rich chocolate. The a for agua, it's a bit more it's more watered down. Okay, but for this, we're gonna go a simple route. He's gonna put these tableya into this container. Note that since it's chocolate. When you make it traditionally, there's a couple of issues. Number one is you have to stir it, consi uh, con uh, you have to stir it continuously. Because if not, it will burn. Especially if you're on a stove, it will just burn. And also the, 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 your other enemy, aside from burning, is a separation. Because if the temperature gets too hot, either if you use a stove or you, use, uh, or, uh, you, you don't stir consistently, the oils, the fats from the chocolate, will separate. So, in, so if you if you bought some of the if you notice some of the hot, hot chocolate drinks, they have this really shiny layer on top. It's because yeah, the the fats separated from the chocolate from overheat. This is actually quite good because it doesn't get too hot and it stirs consistently. So this is the reason why I wanted to do it. So it satisfies the process of making hot chocolate from the tableya. This case says 10. That's it. One. Ten. I can just keep it open. So if you want to in uh if you want to evaporate the milk the, the, the liquid to reduce it a bit just keep it open. Sixty-seven. Seventy. I guess it's within ballpark. It says eighty-five, but of course there's uh, you know temperature loss, heat loss, etc., and all that. Now, issues with this device. Number one. As you can see, while you can use it as a cup, so after you finish, after you finish making it, you can unplug it and drink it straight out of the cup. It's actually in the manual. It's advised in the manual that you can drink it off. So this functions as a cup too. There is no spout. So as you can see, when I tried to pour it here, it's, uh, it requires some kind of skill. You would want to pour it in one go or else the liquid will just drip off. From the side, this happened to me a couple of times while using this. If you if you don't you know tilt, if you don't pour it with determination or with conviction, you know, if you just pour it bit by bit, liquid will just uh, run off the side because of surface tension, and yeah, uh, you'll get spills. The next one is you can see it's quite hard to clean. Number one, what's, why is it hard to clean? Number one, this is an electronic device. It's a cup. You don't want to have running water underneath. So underneath here, there are, let me just cover it a bit. There are actually holes. There are actually holes here. You cannot immerse this entire thing. And it's, a, it's the cup is quite deep. You have to use a sponge. Do not use your hand, use a sponge, or even better if you, use, if you have the bottle cleaner, use that. Uh, thankfully, the stir is, is removable, and there's no moving. There's no like moving parts. It's just a pin inside in the middle. It's not that hard, but still, you have to be a bit more careful compared to cleaning other appliances. If I may say, it's not that 
much harder than cleaning a normal milk frother. It will just get a bit more diff more more difficult if you happen to put warm milk and you make it melt make milk tea, and the milk ends up getting burnt at the bottom. That's gonna be a bit more challenging. So the other one is you can see that there is the seam between the metal, as you can see, and this plastic. This is actually plastic. This is not plastic. This is plastic. There's a seam here inside, and uh, you might. It requires a bit more scrubbing to clean it. That's why it's quite hard to clean. And not to mention, you have this uh, mesh strainer. Speaking of this mesh strainer, this one is actually quite a bit sharp. This one is a bit sharp, so you have to be careful. It's not nice sharp, but you can feel its roughness and its sharpness. So if you're not careful, you might end up getting wounded by this edges okay so those are just a few caveats nonetheless this is actually a very unique product this is the only product i've seen that can make milk tea at its price point so i bought this at around 1200 pesos with shipping included uh, most places sell this for 1499 15 pesos 1500 pesos which is cheaper than many milk frother any milk frother cups, which sells for 2,000, 3,000, and it can only froth milk. This can froth milk, this can make milk tea, make coffee, or just stir. This can do more than a milk frother. As I, can, as I said earlier before, this is simply uh, basically a milk frother that can heat up to 85 degrees Celsius and run for nine minutes instead of the usual 100 instead of the usual two minutes would i advise buying this well there is no spout aside from the issues with pouring so when it's done as you can hear it beat three times it will be couple of not three times four times it will stop uh one of the issues here is that there's no spout and if you want the froth milk, one thing you want to do is maybe to make latte art. You cannot do it here because there's no spout. It will just pour out. Uh, so if you want to make, if you just, if you want to make use this of froth milk and make latte art, no. Uh, this is not the best machine to buy if you want to froth, if you want to, if you want to mainly froth milk or to make latte art. But for everything else, if you want to make hot chocolate, Here. So for this one, I'm just going to mm, really nice hot chocolate here. Ah, it's really smooth. So if you notice, there's no oily film on top. It's actually very, very well blended and well heated. And the chocolate, all of the chocolate just melts off. Here. And if you want the batero side, want frothy, well, it, you can't actually froth it if it just contains water. You need want you want to add a bit of milk. Number one, number two, there's a stir function, and the stir function sufficiently froths it, froths it. If you want to constantly stir it, it's pretty pretty good. Look, it's really smooth. See, and if you if you're one of people who made royal milk tea, you know that if you overheat the milk. There, will, there tends to be filming of the milk on top. This doesn't. If you want to make milk tea and chocolate, I would highly recommend buying this. Especially for its price point of 1 5 pesos or 1 2 pesos. It's really, really, really good. It saves you a lot of time. You just pour cho chocolate, you just put water, milk, cho then you add the chocolate, turn it on, and leave it be. As opposed to the, the traditional way you are, where you have to constantly stir it in the pot and control the heat. This is this is not a lifesaver because you know this is just milk tea and chocolate. It won't save your life if you if you don't have this. But this is a really huge time saver if you if you want to drink you know milk tea uh, and chocolate a lot. Oh yeah, one one small thing. This bottom, 
the the bottom of this thing you can actually it's actually quite kind of removable you might want to uh keep it be pay attention to this and not to remove it outright okay so this is the end of my review i hope you like uh this review and don't forget to you know, subscribe and like i'll be posting more reviews of the appliance or the small things i buy from lazada and of not to mention the tablea review so far this is actually good there's no hint of uh, there's no bits that i i tasted